Okay. Um, the question is, um, uh, Lux X was, there's a rumor, there's a rumor that was going on here that, uh, uh, this, that I joined a presidential convoy, right? <laughs> you know, this rumor came from the NGC folks because I used one minute to talk about Kanda integrity way back in October. And the video came on um, social media, uh, media and became viral. Lux, I can tell you for sure, if you see me and attended the wedding of the president Dora, I was invited from State House. I went there. Those pictures, you saw all of them, right? I'm a public figure. My presence everywhere, people take pictures of me. So there's no way, you know, it's false, it's baseless. You know, but they're helping me. Whenever they tie me to APC, we have folks in the APC that's going to vote for me. So the more you talk about APC, 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 this man is APC, this man, because a lot of the APC folks, they sick and tired of President Koroma. They're looking for alternative, and the alternative is me. So they're helping for me to win the APC. I need APC vote, SLPP vote, before I become president. People don't know that. And uh, buried the mudslide victims of Watalo. I was behind the convoy. Yum Kela was just after my car. Most of the journalists, I believe, even my brother here, he was there. Yes, I was there. That was the only time. And at the time, pictures was taken, interviews. So if I join Anis by Chroma's convoy, the world will know about it. It's not a secret. I'm a leader. The president will call me one day and say, come and let's talk about this, this, this. And then on our way back, I said, okay, let me join your convoy. <laughs> Joining a convoy doesn't mean I'm going to join a party. No, but no, I did not at any point in recent times. The only time was to go to Waterloo to go bury the more side victims. I've never joined. In fact, I have to be careful. By joining the president convoy, if I happen to have a breakdown or something happen, they will come and arrest me for treason. So I block the president. So I have to be careful. People don't know that. You can't be joining a presidential convoy without just like that. You know, some people, I know they're not thinking at all. Right now, if I join and something happens, they say, oh, come on, come block the president convoy. That is all. Let's arrest him for treason. Where will I be? Six foot one, on there, right? Before the election. I'm smarter than that. No, those folks, they are really, really um, out of their mind. And I'll show you, Mohamed Kamari Masari will never, ever, 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 ever join the APC party. I'm telling you, this is, uh, or the SLPP party, or any other party in this country. I want to make it categorically clear. But, you know, those are rumors that, are, that doesn't have even a merit. So I want to lay right on bed. But you, did you ask two double questions or that's just one? Yeah, you asked the fresh face of the running Oh, the fresh face about, yes. Oh, yes, this person has never joined any other political party. Her first membership of a party is the ADP. And she has never. And this is what I've called for. Right now, Yukela is calling for change. Samura Kamara is calling for change. Uh, Madabio is calling for change. But guess what? Ask me Madabio's cabinet, next cabinet. I'll tell you who they are. Ask me Yumkela next cabinet. I'll tell you who they are. Ask me Samura Kamara's cabinet. I'll tell you who they are. But ask Kamarimba's cabinet. You have no idea who they are. Right? I don't have ex-ministers. I don't have ex-ambassadors. I don't have ex-vice presidents around me. New faces. Fresh faces. You guys will be surprised. <laughs> Two new ministers will be right in this room. Yes. And if you say you journalists, I say, well, keep your journalists pen there. Can't stop the people of this country. <laughs> this is what we call change. Change is something, it's not all wine in new bottles. But the change of uh, Yum Kela is all wines. Can you imagine? A 65 year old man as a running mate. What's his name? Uh, 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 um, Andrew Kelly. Can you imagine that? Two of them were running for SLPP flag bearer, and you call that change. You know, so we, uh, we need to be serious about change in this country. And like I said earlier, Kande is premature, and we are putting him in a bottle. After 2018 March, he's going to come out of that bottle. But he's really premature in politics. He's 58 years old, never registered, never voted in this country. So after this election, then he qualifies 
for the next election. But we, this, and nobody in this country will take them serious, except people that have this um, complex issue that um, somebody who works for United Nation. And let me tell you one thing about United Nation. United Nation is nothing. No country in the whole world that a United Nation has developed. Go check it, none. United Nations haven't developed no country. In fact, it's the countries that develop in United Nations. People don't know the difference. Every year, every nation contributes money for the running of United Nations. American government alone spent about $7 billion for the United Nations peacekeeping and running the United Nations. In fact, Donald Trump, not too long ago, said, I'm going to cut that $7 billion to 40%. The United Nations have become freezing now. Wait a minute. So we are paying Kande Yumkela working for United Nations. So for somebody to say, because somebody worked for United Nations, he has all... No, they were United Nations staff. They were there for three major things. They should know how to talk so they can get more money from, from, from vendors. They should know how to get timeline and project, and write project. Understand? And they try to, you know, look at even their, their, their conferences in New York. It's all about talk. Take a mic and talk. So people don't know that. We, even Sierra Leone, we contributed money. The last figure, I think, is about $100,000 to United every year. Yes. So who can tell us that because you work for United Nations, you have the, 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 the know-how to transform this country? No. No. It's totally false. So next week, like I said, I'm going to really elaborate more better and tell people that we, the nations of the world, we build the United Nations. And United Nations have never really actually developed Sierra Leone. Oh, sorry, any nation in this world. So really, what can you do about that? And um, so my running mate is here. Like I said before, this lady, I'm very much honored. Oh, no. I'm very much honored to have her as my next vice president of Sierra Leone. I'm very much honored for her to be my um, Annie Walsh Secondary School for 13 years. She also lectures at the um, Jala University. She worked for the United Nations UNICEF for one year. And this woman is nobody than Madame Aisata Abdullah Kamara. I produce my next Vice President of the Republic of Sierra Leone, a woman of integrity, a woman of substance. A renowned teacher, a lecturer, somebody who believes in Sierra Leone, somebody who is new in the political limelight of Sierra Leone, somebody who Every woman will be proud to have her as Vice President of Sierra Leone. This woman is a wonderful woman. I can't just stop to talk about her. She's a great woman. Madam Aisata Abdullah Kamara. She was born right here in Frobe. She grew up in the Frobe community. And her father used to be one of the imams and sheikhs for the Frobe community. And um, she is really ready and fired up. So. So far, I just want to give the mic to her to say a thank you and a few words to you. But for now, I'm extremely, extremely happy and honored to announce Madam Aisata Abdullah Kamara to be the next Vice President of Sierra Leone. Thank you, thank you, thank you.
I am flabbergasted. I am overwhelmed. I wish my father is here today to see the kind of child he always called my junior. I wish he is here today. Oh. Thanks to the ADP membership, its executive, the diaspora, and our able leader and chairman, Mr. Mohamed Kamarimba Mansari, for providing me this leadership role to serve my country at the apex. Leadership is destined and is an awesome responsibility. With humility and great sense of duty and passion, I wholeheartedly accept the privilege and greatest responsibility of serving the ADP in changing our beloved Mama Salo. It is the right of the people to decide their own destiny and to make their way to freedom. I want us to give this country leadership that is right for our times and right for our country. This is not to be measured by yardstick of color or degree of social development. It is an inalienable right. We, especially the women, have lost too much, but have not lost everything. Certainly not Sierra Leone. For the ADP will stand with you, and as for many tomorrows as it takes, because we need to change the male dominance representation that we have in Sierra Leone. The ADP has shown talents, it has shown ideas, and above all, it has shown optimism about the future of our party and the future of our country. We need to change the way we think. It's not enough just to talk about tackling problems in our communities. We have to have all the right ideas for turning our communities around. The ADP aims at empowering youths, women, people with disability, the aged, and all vulnerable sector in our society. I have assisted in leading ADP, the ADP party in forcing accountability that when the government, this APC government does the right thing, we work with them. But when they do the wrong things, we call them and act to account and criticize them very well. The long-term future of this country does not depend on petty politics. So, we should all work to get it right. And I want us to change because this country faces research, deep thinking, and I want us to get it right. The big challenge is to reform our public services. We need to improve public services for everybody in this country. Create jobs for the youths and graduates. I want them working in public services that are well funded, but over which they have the freedom to control and deliver the service of, to the public. The next great challenge is the quality of life. I want my children, your children, to grow up in a country where the streets are safe, the public space isn't filthy, where it isn't a hassle to get around, and you can own your own home, and where climate of change and the environment are in an afterthought. Another big challenge is national and international security, which the ADP is very much concerned about. To those of you at home watching, if you have the passion for positive politics, come and join us in the ADP. If you want to build a better Sierra Leone, if you want me and all of us to be a voice of hope, for optimism and for change, come and join us. Everyone is invited. I thank you very much. Thank you very much, my dear. Um, like I said, this is the next Vice President of Sierra Leone. And you've seen, I've told you, it's a woman of integrity and substance. 
and she's going to be right with me and I'm happy to have her here she's been working you know she's very humble one of the things um, sometimes about two years ago I wanted her to do some things and she told me Lida I believe in your philosophy ideologies to a point that even if you want me to come sweep your office every morning I'll come clean your office I trust in you I believe you have what it takes to make this country a better country so you've seen somebody who offered to sweep my office now is the next yeah. vice president of Sierra Leone so this is a lesson for every this is the best part you can create I'm not proud of APC I'm sad to have my parents of the APC and I'm sure Mohammed is the best leader we ever had so join me folks we have to work hard when I say work hard because APC they say they have 99 tricks but we're going to throw them out this time thank you Alaji Kenwa like I said it's a born APC that's another one we a strong APC member now he's a yeah Mr. Mohamed Kamar Mambasari as a young man we really appreciate him his changes his philosophy mentality of doing things and to be sincere with you, the whole of Europe, diaspora, we have been with him for quite a long time following him. He is the best man we can ever think when we need about when we are talking about change in this country. So folks, I talk to you, I ask you to please join me, let's support Mr. Mohammed Kamari Mamasari as the next president of this country. Thank you, man. Thank you, man. Um next Tuesday. I promise to have a big press conference, right? It's going to happen next week. Is it the 16th on Tuesday? What's the 16th on Tuesday? It's 16th, right? Huh? Yes. One o'clock, please. Um, it's going to be fully loaded press conference um, at one o'clock on Tuesday. Come here. Um, we've taken this um, special invitation. I have a lot of information to, to offer. Um, and also, every week going forward, We'll have a press conference. I don't know if anybody has any other question. They do? Yes, ma'am. Okay, what is Madam Ansata bringing to the table, right? Uh, okay, you can a little bit, just some advice. I think politics is not something that is new to everybody. Each and every one of us live with politics, we sleep with politics, we get up with politics. So I think the question you're asking is that so many things we have to do. If you look at what the ADP is doing now, choosing a woman to represent this country, I think that one is a very good job, a very good uh, thing that he's, he has done. For him, a very new party, very new ideas, young and energetic young people coming together to say that enough is enough is good. The new thing we'll bring in this country is that I've already said it in my acceptance speech. Our public, our civil servants, do you think they are competent or they are, they are, they are comfortable with what they are earning? The way they are, the, the, the government, Sierra Leone government is treating them? I think it's a big no. You are a public servant. Is this comfortable with you? That is one of the changes that I want to bring. That when you are a public servant, I want to help my chairman and leader. The ideology of the ADP. That what we are going through is not to the satisfaction of Sierra Leoneans. We need to double up. We need to make our people live the life of comforts. We need our people to live to make sure that when they call themselves Sierra Leoneans, they are proud. They will lift their head high. That is the Sierra Leone I want to help. 
my leader and chairman to, to, to have. A country wherein a child cannot worry about him being fed or him going or are going to school or the parents hustling around to pay school fees, to pay college fee, or youth coming out of the university for four or five years without any job. Them, the, uh, uh, the ghettos, the, the, the attire bases being packed with our graduates. Is that why, why they go to college for? No. They are there to improve their livelihood and to improve this country that we call Mama Salud. Because if we have a brain drain, if we don't have people that are able to, ma to uh, handle this country very well, in the next 20 or 30 years, Sierra Leone is going down the drain. I want us not to go down that drain. I want us to elevate up. Thank you. Um, yes. She, um, like I said, it's an honor for me to choose her as a running mate. Um, gonna be, she's going to bring a lot, a lot of um, a different dimension in our politics. Uh, she's a grassroots person. She's, um, she's a teacher. She know the struggles the teachers are bringing in this country. She's a mother. She know the struggle the mothers are going through to have uh, their children go to school. She's also uh, a person, an activist, who believes that the right should be right, wrong should be wrong. And she's not afraid to speak her mind. So she's bringing that boldness. The camera by in her, you guys will see it. And it's not going to be no stopping. If you see um, uh, um, uh, Madam Isata, you saw Junior Kamarimba in her. Whatever you can see, she's fearless, she's brave. This is really what she's going to bring in our politics. There's no turning back at all. Yes, sir. Yes, Mr. Leader. I have a question for Madam Isata. Uh, Sierra Leone is a place we are in, we've seen, it, we've seen in the past, it's difficult to see women support their colleagues spirit on national politics. Madam Aysata, you've been named the running mate for Mr. Kamari Mamasai. What is the message will you send out to your colleague women that this time around, a woman has been named as a running mate for a political party and this time around, we need the support of women? That's my question. What will be the message that you will take along for women, for your colleague women, to see you as indeed the possible chance wherein the women will grab opportunity to, 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 to get the seat of the vice president. I'm sure you are admiring me even as you are seeing this now. <laughs> yeah, we have one vote. The admiration is already in your faces, right? That admiration has already seeped down into the women's organization. Whenever the name Isata Black Kamara is mentioned, you see them, they know that this person stands for it. If you look at the ADP, our color is so feminine that as soon as you put on the color, smartness is what you see, right? The color itself depicts our hearts. The color itself depicts what Sierra Leone is, hope. Colors have name. When there is something dangerous, what color do you put there? Very good. So, our color is telling you that there is hope. There is light at the end of the tunnel. So, the message I'll take to my colleague folk is that when change have been costed, but our male phones are not choosing that part of it. They don't give it value. They think it's just their responsibility. But let me tell you, if you are going to pay a cook, your wife is working, you are going to pay a cook. You are going to hire a cook. Is this for free? I'm asking you, is it for free? So if that woman is providing that domestic role for you, why are you not paying her? So that's the message we'll take. That together we stand, together we rise. And okay. you have to be the master. So you now start to think positively that I am a youth, I am the working force, I am I have all it takes for Sierra Leone to move from grass to grace. It is you now, it is your responsibility now. Now take it from you that as of today, I want Sierra Leone to be up there, not to be a label as the third hungriest country in the world, darkest city in the in the world giving all those negative 
G uh, uh, GDPs. No. Start to say now, this is the Sierra Leone. The Sierra Leone that I want is the Sierra Leone that will be Singapore in the next five or ten years. That's the Sierra Leone we should be thinking about, not the Sierra Leone that is going to be generated. Yes, ma'am, what is it? Uh, women have been calling for 30% into uh, politics. Madam Vice President to be paid. Okay, Madam Vice President to be paid. Exactly. With all due respect, um, women are calling for 30%. Minimum. Um, minimum. You, yes. you, you being the <laughs> Vice President now for the ADP, what is your relationship with this uh, big women's organization, like a 50-50 group, um, women's forum, and other female organizations? How, what, are, what have you put in place? How prepared are you to come down to this market women, like the Abacha women, to come back to their votes? Because as women are calling for major role, uh, to play major role in politics, are you prepared to meet these women to contest in some, um, uh, with this big political... For me, it's not about meeting the grassroots. It's about how I'm going to meet that glass ceiling. For the grassroots, I am with them. Those of you, those that know me, that know where I, I grew up. Of course, my mother, we spent all of, of our lives at magazine, go to six magazine courts. That is where I almost spent all of my entire life. And up to now, I'm there with the market people. Go there. I still have my store. I'm still selling. But my problem is not those people. It is those glass ceiling. Those giving, building up the human resource in this country. I think that's the greatest sacrifice someone can take. Since 1994, when I started to teach, I've been a teacher throughout. So, if it is just saying that all those that have passed through me, ADP is going to have 65% votes. Yeah. Just saying that, that all those that have passed through me, that teacher, that at every season has a different name in that school. I started at Bishop Johnson. A school that everybody thinks is a great C school. Yes. When I was there, go and check the records. What I did. The first in the history of that school, I taught when we are having one shift, I taught people. And the first in their history, they have very good O-level results. That one is a feather in my cap. I came to the annual world for the first year after the war. Just for just three months, I taught three year, course, three year courses for just three months. Go and check there and see what the results are. I went to SOS because when I'm going, we are all teachers. But there, are, there is a vast difference between, between a teacher and, and teaching. Everybody can become a teacher. But are you effective? Are you efficient? That is what you should. Are you passing the right message to the children, to the people? That one you should ask. I went to SOS. All of you know. When I went there just for one year, I have 100% pass, both at GSS and uh, SS. Come back, I, come back to the annual watch and go and ask my record. When we are talking about record, is how to build the human resource. It's not just about teaching. You ask my girls, I cancel them. I think I am that teacher that sacrifice. I give all I can. When a child is stubborn, I'll just tell the parents, give that child to me. By the grace of God, some, the child changes. I have those that are sending for me every December. It's not that because they are exception. Go to the university. They know that I am disciplined. The, my only problem is that I am disciplined. Nobody forced me to do anything. I do what is right and what, because there is a God over there that watches what I'm doing. So it is that God that I'm afraid of. It's not human being. So if you're asking me what my, when I was at the UN, if you look at my CV, you go and check in the UN. I, I went there, but I was part and parcel of those that act on the plenary when we are doing on the, when we are discussing on the Commission on the Status of Women. Go and check the records. I was part of them that prepare the General Assembly uh, 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 reports for 2010. Meaning that wherever I go, it's my leadership skills that I, you will see them in me. Even if I want to hide them, you see them in me. When I took over for the first time, I've been in politics, but in, was in college days. Go then and ask when our government was at Njala during our days. I was Minister of Transport then. 
Go and ask what I did. Those are benchmarks. Those are things that you, you try to see. Because where you've worked, what you've done, are the things that you remember my, my president to be. Never know the kind of person I am. I came to him. He never knew what kind of person I am. But after some time, nobody told him anything. That what leadership quality he saw in me. And then he delegates responsibility to me. So whatever I am doing, whatever I'm doing, I give my best. I always try to give my best because it is that my best that determines my future. And I'm sure for this role that I am taking, you people will see that I'm going to give my best because you are losing. Please, 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 Um, absolutely. That's a great question. And I was happy, I'm very happy that somebody brought it up. Because uh, one thing I, I know about life, I came here to bring real change, not cosmetic change, not uh, Okada change, no, sorry, um, Omolanke change, but real development. The thing is, I don't see religion, I don't see color, I don't see religion. But they're not giving money to Christians for them to go see the birth of Christ. I'm the only one that did it in this country. So it's not about the religion you are, it's about preaching the truth and standing for the right thing. And all the pastors, I was invited to Pastor Mahmoud's um, crusade the other day at the stadium, I went there, and everybody knows that I am there for the truth. So it's not just about what you practice or the religion you worship. For me, it's all about the faith you have in God. So we looked at it honestly, my sister, but to me, I went beyond just looking at, oh, I have to find a Christian. Even if that Christian is a, a corrupt human being, that Christian is somebody who, no, I want to find somebody who's willing to lead, and that's why I made up that decision, so that Madam Asheta can be my running mate because one of this position you need to look at is loyalty and trust do you trust the person and you know now right is this person loyal to your cause um, a, a, a vice president is an extension to the presidency so whatever you believe in that person have to believe in it 100 percent that person have to cushion you at all time for you to succeed so people the role of a vice president that's all there is is all helping the president to succeed that's their mandate. So I believe Madam I have that. That's all it is. It's all about helping the president to succeed. And sometimes when they have the diversion like Sam Sumana, that's why he was Sam Sumana nice by Anis by Koroma three years ago. But we are going forward with that. Um, I don't know if somebody have another question, but I want to make a quick introduction again. I probably missed her. She's a woman, Mariama Fofana, come up. So people can know you. She's also one of the strong. She just came two days ago for the election. You guys have no idea. Um, she came from London. Um, she's one of the women leaders um, in London um, for the ADP. So she told me when I was in London um, last month, she said, leader, I'm coming. And I'm coming for the election. I was born in Manjoro. And I'm going to make sure that we win the whole pre war chiefdom. So you can just say hello to them. See, she's so shy, she don't want to even speak. I hope when she go home, when we go home together, she will go talk to her people, uh, uh, Manjoro and that Karina area. Um, so who have another question? Anyone? One, two, three, four. Yeah, we have just, it's almost three o'clock. So I like that. No, we're on time. Anyway, um, on Tuesday, please come. I have a full package for you. Um, we are going to talk about a lot of things and um, a lot a lot a lot of things and also um, every week now going forward so that because a lot of journalists say mr kamarimba will miss you 
Who say you been there? Who say? APC no don't buy you so. Now I say, but I get money pass and a skoroma. Next week I will come tell you that I am the richest presidential candidate. Hey, but I will come tell you now why? Because some of them are not thief and thief. So I don't come thief my money. I don't come the right money where work a lala. If you know, if you thief money, I don't come to that money. Now the pure money will come. The pure money I get money pass it on. But then, so I will come tell you more next year. Thank you, thank you.